morning and welcome to worship here, virtual worship here at Southminster Presbyterian Church. We hope this space today will be for you an oasis of hope, healing, and renewal. That is our vision here at Southminster Presbyterian Church. I especially want to extend a welcome to all of our guests and first time visitors with us this morning who are watching this, who are worshiping with us. We're glad that you are here. Well, we may be worshiping virtually, but we can rest assured that God's presence is filling the space between all of us, wherever we might be, bringing us closer together, wherever we might be. This morning, as we begin worship, I think uh, we are able to do this and have this wonderful worship experience virtually because of Marshall Hertzstead and Sue Thompson, who film and put together every week this wonderful service. And so I want to thank them as we begin our service here this morning. And there are plenty of opportunities for all of you to be part of our mission here at Southminster. This is Stewardship Month right now we're in the middle of, and this is when we ask you to make a financial promise, a pledge to support our church in 2021. Now, many of you have wondered about our new vision. What does it look like? Why do we need one? Well, today you're going to hear all about it during the sermon. So I encourage you to tune in and to keep listening. Well, so far we've received just under $194,000 in pledges, and our goal is $432,000, so we're well on our way, but we also have a ways to go. I want to thank all of you who have already made your pledge and for your gifts and donations to Southminster, and I want to encourage those who are still prayerfully considering whether or not to make a pledge to please consider supporting Southminster, its ministry, and its mission in 2021. Well, next Sunday, January 31st, we'll dedicate all of our pledges to God and for God's use here in his ministry at Southminster. And I do want to thank you again for all of your support uh, for the mission and ministry of our church. We could not do this. We could not be here without you. Well, it's also Mission Month right now. Today, we welcome Rich Havard from the Inclusive Collective, one of our mission partners here at Southminster. And Rich always has something good and powerful and profound to say. So. I encourage you to join us on Zoom at 11.30 to hear what Rich has to say and to hear about all that's happening with the Inclusive Collective. You can find the Zoom link on our website, spcah.org, or if you receive the e-blast, it's also in the e-blast. If you do go to our website, it's going to be under Adults and then Adults, uh, excuse me, Sunday Adult Education. And I do want to thank uh, Gene Walker and Sandy Pfeiffer for putting this wonderful Mission Month together and giving us these wonderful opportunities where we can learn what our partners are doing to spread God's love with the world. Well, if you want to know more about the happenings here and other ways that you can participate and be part of our ministry and mission here, please feel free to visit our website, spcah.org, or check out the e-blast if you receive that. Well, now, let us turn towards God. Let us take a deep breath and open our hearts and minds in worship. And as we do, let us light the peace candle. And we light this peace candle as a reminder of God's peace in our lives today and every day. Once again, welcome to worship. Hi, Southminster Church family, it's Jen Strimling here. I hope this message finds you all well. Sue asked me to put together a chat with you for a couple minutes about some of my favorite ministry areas of the church. So I think I will go ahead and start off with our youth team. Um, needless to say, 2020 was a long year for all of us, especially our tweens and teens. So I feel blessed that we had our Parenting Love and Logic group that um, finished just basically as COVID lockdown started. And um, with the use of Zoom, we were able to support one another and continue the parenting series with Sheila moderating it um, along with Kari by her side and just share best practices and any challenges we were having. And it was a great support community to come to. Um, along with that with youth, I would still say they've had a lot of fun over this summer. 
we were able to at least meet outside and have mini golf along with um, food at Moretti's and um, meet up at Culver's and do Bible study there, which was really nice. Um, now that we are in the doldrums of winter, um, we are still meeting via Zoom. They have Bible study every week and we meet every other week for Sunday school. It's great we have new curriculum. Um, it really relates to the kids in a much different, better way, also using video and um, challenges that they face in their current times. And it really provides for great discussion. So um, I gotta say one other thing about youth, we have enjoyed baking with Peggy on Zoom. So those Super Bowl sub brownies that you could buy before, um, we have been baking on Zoom, and I am sure they have put a couple pounds on me during COVID. Um, so I have appreciated doing that with the youth group and um, seeing everyone's smiling faces, even if it's on camera. The next ministry area I think I'll mention is the Women's Bible Study Group that meets every other Tuesday. Um, I have really enjoyed spending time in God's Word over the last decade with these women. Um, they are each gems. They have um, shared life with me along with their insights on um, whatever book we're studying. Currently, we are working on change and facing the unexpected. And that has been a great topic for us um, and very appropriate in the climate that we're in. The last ministry area I think I'll mention is yoga. I have to say um, it has been challenging to get out and get exercise, especially in the winter. So it has been great meeting with Kathy Godonis and um, the other yogis that partake in this weekly um, class. It is a great group of women and it's good to inspire one another to um, keep up with some physical health along with the mental health that comes along with our practice. So. With that, I will bid you adieu. I wish all of you um, good health, and I look forward to all of us getting our vaccines and um, seeing each other in person shortly this summer, I hope. Be well and take care. As we come to the time where we join together in the reading and hearing of God's word, join me for a moment of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for bringing us to this space. We thank you for opening our hearts and minds to your spirit. And God, we pray as we come here from wherever we may be, however we might be tuning in, that you give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear your spirit, that we may come before you faithfully and to receive your word, no matter how challenging how comforting, no matter the invitation. God, we pray that our worship is good and pleasing to you this morning. And we offer this prayer to you in your name. Amen. Well, our scripture this morning takes us to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. And this is the call narrative of the first disciples. And I have to admit that this is probably my favorite version of Jesus calling the first disciples. Uh, it may have to do just a little bit with the fact that I love fishing, but that aside, I think there's also a lot of great applications here for the church. And so we're going to look at chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. 
But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with them were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Would you pray one more time with me? Loving and gracious God, we do thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for your amazing acts of abundance and provision. And God, as we contemplate your word this morning, its comforts, its challenges, its invitations, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts are pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. We like to watch a show in our house called Wicked Tuna. <laughs> Wicked Tuna is about New England fishermen trying to catch the elusive blue fin tuna, one of the most valuable fish in the world off the east coast of the United States. One of these fish, one of these blue fin tuna could bring you upwards of $20,000 if you could catch it. And of course, that was the drama inherent in the show. Would they or wouldn't they catch one of these bluefish tuna? And if they did, how much would it actually be worth? Because it could be worth $5,000. It could be worth $20,000. You see, bluefin tuna are very difficult to catch, even for the most experienced fishermen. So it wasn't uncommon to see a fisherman pull his boat into the harbor at night after three, four days of fishing, dejected and discouraged because he didn't catch anything. I mean, fishing for the bluefin tuna was their livelihood. Even one fish would have been enough to ensure his and his family's security and needs for another year. Well, I imagine that this is how the disciples felt when they were cleaning their nets. They had been out all night fishing on the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee was the hot spot for fishermen in first century Palestine, and yet the disciples had fished all night and they had caught nothing. So I imagine them being discouraged, tired, smelling of bait, and just ready to get stuff put away, cleaned up, put away, and to head home to their families. So when Peter says to Peter, from Peter's own boat, by the way, go to the deepest part of the lake and cast your nets out one more time, Peter only agrees reluctantly. You know, Peter's a professional fisherman, and he knows this lake probably as well as, if not better than most. And he had fished all night and caught nothing. So what could Jesus know or what does Jesus see that Peter doesn't? On the other hand, Peter's livelihood depends on full nets. Empty nets could mean empty pockets and empty bellies. So why not cast his net one more time? What does he have to lose? You know, maybe, maybe he'll get lucky. Then again, when you have Jesus on your side, you don't need luck. In what can only be called an act of God, the disciples toss their nets over the side, far and deep. And they caught so many fish, Luke says, that their nets almost broke and their boats almost sank. I mean, imagine that. That's what you call bagging your limit, if you know what I mean. Now, though, now, the disciples would have enough to provide for themselves and their families, not just today, but for many more days. Plus, the fish they would sell would be enough to provide sustenance for others, not just today, but also many more days to come. Full nets don't mean provision and security for the fishermen alone, but also for the entire community. That's the beauty of God's provision. And after providing this amazing gift... Jesus tells the fishermen, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. The implication being, instead of filling nets with fish that will all eventually die, you'll be filling the kingdom with souls that will live for all eternity. 
And upon hearing Jesus' words, without hesitation, the fishermen drop everything to follow Jesus. Now I find the call narrative of Peter and his fellow fishermen to be a wonderful model for the church. And not just because I love fishing. Our primary calling as the church is to glorify God and to make disciples. And making disciples isn't forceful or threatening work. Making disciples is personal and relational work. It's deep water work, as Jesus implies. It's in the deep waters of our lives that healing, renewal, and ultimately life is found. That's a powerful message for us in 2021. I mean, there are a lot of weary and needy people that need full nets that only God can provide. Well, how do we do this? How do we fish for people and honor our call as Jesus' disciples? Well, for the last year, our visioning team at Southminster has been discerning answers to these very questions. In this past November, our council approved a new vision for SPC that we believe God will use to empower us to cast our nets far and deep. Our new vision is Oasis, a space of hope, healing, and renewal. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment your average day or even your average week right now. And I want you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine how do you feel at the end of one of these days? Or how do you feel at the end of one of these weeks? Well, for me personally, I feel dry, parched, and weary. Very desert-like. Okay, now, I want you to imagine for a moment, and if it helps, close your eyes, how you feel after a powerful worship experience or a meaningful Bible study or a wonderful conversation with a friend from church. How do you feel after that? Again, me personally, I feel renewed. I feel hopeful. I feel energized and ready to take on whatever's next, whether that's the next day or the next week or whatever God has in store. Well, this transformation that we're talking about is the same thing that happens at an oasis. You know, biblically, an oasis was often a fertile, life-giving space created by God out of what was once a desert. As Psalm 107 says, God turned the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into flowing springs. There God brought the hungry to live. Beautiful, assuring, comforting image. You know, our world so often drains us of life and leaves us feeling dry and desert-like. I mean, just consider all of last year. And yet, by partnering with God in creating an oasis, Southminster is offering our congregation and our community a fertile, life-giving alternative. An alternative that we believe will give others hope by providing the healing and renewing message of Christ's love. A message our world sorely needs right now. And it won't happen all at once. And it'll, it'll take some time. You know, our new vision, after all, is the destination that we're working towards. The good news, though, is we're already doing it. Did you know that every Wednesday, our choir meets via Zoom for support and fellowship and they become an oasis for each other Kathy Erickson one of our members leads a woman's group where many are struggling and dealing with some hard stuff and Kathy's leadership reaches deep into these women's lives by providing an oasis where they can gather pray and support one another our video worship put together every week by Sue Thompson and And Marshall Hertzstad provides an oasis where our congregation and beyond can worship and lean on God. We found out this week that I think we have people worshiping with us from Canada, which is awesome. Welcome, Canada. 
Now these are just some of the examples of how we're casting our nets far and deep into people's lives and creating a fertile, life-giving oasis. There are others, and I encourage you to talk to our council and our staff about some of these other things that we're doing. Now, you might be wondering, you know, our church is a healthy and active place. Why do we need a new vision? That's a good question. It's an important question. And the answer is a difficult one. And the answer is one that we're going to be talking about a lot over the next year with staff, with council, and with all of you. I mean, consider for a moment the average age of our congregation is probably 65, if not a little older right now. Then consider that at least 50% of those under 45 years of age never attend church. Or if they do, it's maybe once or twice a month. And folks, the pandemic hasn't and won't help these trends. The Barna Group, a respectable Christian research organization, did a study a few years ago revealing why younger people don't attend church or do so far less frequently. And the bottom line, according to the study, and this is my words, not the study's words, is the church no longer engages the lives of younger people and their struggles, and therefore is no longer impacting their lives. And the underlying message here is that our culture, as we all know, has changed dramatically. And the church really hasn't. In other words, younger people are seeing the church as irrelevant and are turning elsewhere to find meaning in their lives and to find God. And the irony is that more and more younger people are struggling with loneliness and meaninglessness in their lives. Younger generations are desperate for an oasis, and yet the church isn't providing the fertile, life-giving space they need. Well, we're going to change that here at Southminster. Southminster is going to be that oasis, whether it's for our younger people, our older people, or everybody in between. And we're going to do this by increasing and enhancing our virtual presence with live streaming and more online discipleship. After all, this is especially where younger generations Uh, spend their time and so we need to engage them there and not just with more content but with stuff that will really impact their lives we're going to add a PDO plus ministry to our current PDO ministry that will serve kindergartners and we're going to be evaluating all our current ministries to make sure they are engaging younger people and this is just a little bit of what we're doing at our annual meeting in February I'll be going through our entire strategic plan, or I should say phase one of our strategic plan. That's what council has approved. And we can, we'll be talking about it for the next year as we begin to live out this new vision. You see, by casting our nets far and deep into people's lives and creating a fertile life-giving oasis is essential if we want to reach people with the gospel today. In 2021, after the year we had in 2020, we're all looking for healing, renewal, and above all else, hope. You know, Joe Biden said in his inauguration speech this week, together we shall write an American story of hope, of unity, of light, of love and healing. You know, President Biden was actually talking about hope for America's future, but I think his words just as easily could have applied to the church. I mean, put them together with our vision. Together, we shall write a story of hope for our congregation and our community, a story of unity, of light, of love, and of healing. That's a great image. It's a powerful image. Folks, we have the opportunity here to start imagining something better. We need to imagine nets full of people finding life at an oasis. And it starts by engaging Jesus like Peter did with wonder, expectation, and surprise. It starts with seeing what Jesus has in mind for us. You know, when Jesus called Peter, he gave Peter a new vision for his life. And God has given our church a new vision for our life together. So let's go cast our nets and let's be an oasis. Would you pray with me? 
Loving and gracious God, we thank you for calling us into your service as your disciples. We thank you for the amazing, surprising, and just altogether unbelievable ways that you do it. God, we thank you for blessing this church with a new vision. We pray as your people that we can live it out faithfully. God, we ask your wisdom and your guidance as we traverse what is probably going to be some difficult territory at times, as we have some hard conversations at times. And yet, God, as long as we are following you, we know we will get through it, not just individually, but together. God, give us the courage and the strength to cast our nets far and deep and to be an oasis for our congregation and for our community. Thank you, God. I offer this prayer to you in your name. Amen.
please pray with me. Loving God, it is a new year, and you have a new vision for us at Southminster. Oh Lord, you have been our rock. You are our redeemer, and you have helped us to weather the storms of this time. But we think, O oh Lord, of those who do not know you, who do not have Jesus in their life, and how difficult it is to weather these times without you who are our rock. O oh Lord, just as you asked the disciples to put their net on the other side, and then they found all these fish, we know, O oh Lord, that you call us to be fishers of people, to share your love and your light, to share our faith, to invite others to walk alongside us as we seek to be your people. O oh Lord, the world needs light. The world needs us to bring your love to others, to connect others with your powerful grace. So we ask you, O oh Lord, to continue to guide our church into this new vision, a vision that is not that new, it just calls us again to reach out to those beyond our walls, to minister to them, to promise to uphold the Great Commission and share our love and faith. Oh Lord, give us the strength to do that, to know that we exist for others. Oh Lord, we also lift up in prayer all of the names on our prayer list. We especially lift up this day David Apt, Myron Gaylord, Phil Allen, John Kading, Shirley Haddon, and ask that your healing presence abide and be with them at this time. O oh Lord, now in a moment of silence, we lift up our personal prayers to you, knowing that you hear us and you respond. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we lift up all these prayers with the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so friends, as we prepare to leave this place today, go forward with the power of the Holy Spirit to share your faith, to reach out to those around you. And may our Lord bless you and keep you. May our Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May our Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.